Hello Year 10, um, this is just a little tutorial from me, um, just to go uh, and talk about this um, activity, planning an investigation. Okay, so normally in your, in your exam this would be worth six marks, uh, and we're going to focus on uh, this question here. Um, to investigate respiration rates in three organisms. Okay, so you're given this um, little bit of bump here, so this is important to know. This would be the setup apparatus that we would have used in school. So we've got our organisms here, small organisms, and uh, they've actually asked us to consider three organisms, wood lice, maggots, which are larvae of flies, and germinating seeds. Now, uh, all living things respire, you know, it's one of those life processes, even germinating seeds do. Um, what we have to remember here, in this practical, is important to know that germinating seeds are not yet photosynthesizing. So they all respire, but none of them are photosynthesizing. And the animals obviously wouldn't, but the germinating seeds only start respiring when um, the leaves come out, the green leaves and the chlorophyll in the leaves start using the light and converting that into chemical energy. So we've got our organisms there, three respiring organisms. What's going to help us um, tell whether or not these organis organisms are re respiring and how quickly they are is this indicator here. Now it starts off, tells us up here, the indicator is sensitive to changes in CO2 concentration. So we know that um, the reaction for um, respiration uses oxygen up and produces carbon dioxide, and water, and energy in the form of ATP, right? So this is the important bit. CO2 actually turns the indicator. Uh, it starts off as um, orange, and then turns yellow in the presence of CO2. So the quicker it goes yellow, the higher the rate of respiration. Um, so what we could do to measure, if we're going to measure the rate of respiration, we'd time this process here to see how quickly that would be. So, okay, you, you could make from this a hypothesis, right? What is a hypothesis? It's a testable prediction. And we can test it because we can do this experiment on it. So our prediction might be actually uh, wood lice are going to be respiring quicker because they're more active, they're moving more, they're displaying more of those life processes or more uh, frequently moving kind of thing. Um, and they're bigger organisms generally. So that might be your hypothesis, right? So if we were going to just gonna move myself over here. Give ourselves a little success criteria um, about how do we answer this six mark question? Well, there's a nice easy way. And we call it corms. Now the C in corm stands for control. Now, in this case, the control might be an, uh, an investigation set up like this one, but without any organisms, so no organisms used. And this will give us an idea of actually, does the CO2 present in the tube without any organisms respiring, does that turn the indicator um, orange to yellow? If it does, there's something wrong with our experiment, or we need to change something and, and maybe absorb that CO2 somehow in the tube to make it um, a better investigation. Okay, 
So we have to include a control in this case, especially with living organisms. O is for organisms. So we have three types of organisms here. We've got the wood lice, we've got the maggots, we've got germinating seeds. That's what we're comparing. Yeah. Now, when we're doing the experiment, we have to consider how many repeats we do. Now, minimum, bare minimum, would be three repeats for each organism. And that way we'd be able to get an idea of any uh, anomalous results. Because if you only have one repeat, you, you don't know whether they're, that was an anomaly. You've got nothing to compare it to. If you do two repeats, both of them are completely different results. You still don't know which is the correct one. Okay, so we do minimum three in order to identify anomalies. And we say that makes our experiment more reliable, correct? Now, M. M is for measurements. What measurements are you going to take? This is your dependent variable, right? We said we're going to look at the color change, orange to yellow, and the time taken for that change to occur. So we'd need to take uh, a stopwatch, start at the beginning of the experiment, and time the, time the length of time it takes to change the indicator from orange to yellow. That's our measurements. Uh, and any details here, let me just find my pen. Where's my pen gone? Okay. Details of how you're going to measure. So how could be your apparatus, could be your indicator, it could be um, the method at which you're going to do that by. So an explanation of the measurements, essentially. Last one stands for same, and this is your control variables. So we would need a list of your control variables. And also maybe a brief description of how you're going to control them. Okay, so this is a very common six mark question in all science papers and GCSE. So this is a really good skill for you to get practice in. So here's this tutorial. Go back to the beginning, um, stop it, pause it in the places you think you need to and um, start writing. Um, your design, or indeed, if I've already asked you to, you can improve your original design. Okay. I'll stop that here now.